If you've been following along with my new server rack installation, the next most critical piece is installing my RGB. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's not installing my LED RGB, but installing something even more critical, and that's installing a UPS device. And not just one UPS device, but two or three, however you want to count them. Delivering clean and consistent power to your server rack is critical to any kind of electronic components that you have, especially when you're running servers and network gear. I learned this the hard way during the summer when we had an extended power outage and I had to shut down all of my servers, including all of my network devices. That gave me pause about what's most critical in my environment and what I need to keep on during an extended power outage. You see, I have a mixture of two types of devices, servers and then network devices. Servers are pretty obvious. It's a combination of all of my servers, my disks and my disk shelves and anything running anything that's really compute. The next bucket of things are my network devices. And this covers things like my fiber modem, my firewall and router, and my switch, which is actually PoE powered. Now I mentioned that it's PoE powered because it powers my cameras as well as a lot of my access points. And for these two classes or groups of devices, I want to have different power strategies. Now I know it's ridiculous to think that I could run my servers for hours and hours on a single UPS device or even multiple. But based on my current usage, I get about 10 minutes before my servers shut down. On the other hand, my network devices can run for almost hours on a UPS battery backup, but the one that I have is a little underpowered. So while I was struggling with trying to figure all of this out after that power outage, Triplight reached out to me and said they wanted to help. They said they'd like to send me a UPS and turns out they sent me, well, three. Their timing was impeccable because I was looking for new UPSs, specifically rack mount ones. And working with the power experts at Triplight, they came up with a fantastic solution and they actually over delivered. This first UPS is a Smart Pro UPS. This sine wave UPS provides protection against blackouts, brownouts, power surges, and line noise that can damage my gear or any electronics. It is ideal for servers and network devices. It's able to switch to battery backup in milliseconds and run long enough for me to shut my servers down safely. This UPS has eight outlets, which is plenty for me. So this UPS provides about 14 minutes of battery backup at full load. Now I know 14 minutes doesn't sound like a lot, but it's actually a lot if you think that it's running at full load. Most of the time you aren't gonna be running a workload at full load, so you can do the out to figure it out that if it's half loaded it'll run almost twice as long so it's it's a pretty decent backup and it has a front panel lcd screen that we'll look at here in a second that helps me monitor data such as load level voltage battery charge and estimated run times with this model you can actually add on an external battery pack which is right below it. And this will provide extra runtime as if it's one big battery. So it's pretty awesome. And on top of all that, it has a 95% efficiency rate. So this thing is really cool. So next up is this external battery pack that's optional that they sent along with it. Now you can connect it to this UPS and extend the runtime, which is pretty awesome. And there isn't much you can say about this battery pack, except for it extends the runtime, which I'm super appreciative of. This gives me about twice the runtime of just this UPS right here, and it all works seamlessly. So here's the back of the unit, and you can see this battery pack below is attached to the UPS up top, and it's connected by this gigantic cable, and then there's a ground cable that runs from the UPS down to the battery. And then in the back, you have additional slots for additional communication cards, I think. And then we have a serial connection, a USB connection, and then an EPO port, which is not telephone. And you can see back here, we have eight outlets, four switched and four unswitched. I don't know if you can hear it, but there is a fan that's running. It's really quiet and it's pushing there out here. Now, I think the way that I'm gonna rack these in my server rack is kind of do them back to back. We'll see. I don't know if this is gonna stretch far enough. It should, but we'll see. First, let's configure the Smart Pro UPS. Now, as you can see, it has this large, nice LCD screen along with some readouts, it cycles through. Now we can go into different modes, see the load right now, which we don't have a load. It's on, obviously. See if there are events, which there were four. We can test the battery. So we're running a battery test right now. And the beep works. Batteries pass. 
and here we are back on the home screen. And here we can see it's 120 volt and my battery capacity is full right now. You can see the output is 120 volt. You can see the runtime is 816 minutes based on this load. Now I only have a network switch plugged into this right now, so the runtime is actually pretty good. And the load isn't even registering, so it must be pretty low. And I assume that's calculated over time. It's probably an average, so it hasn't kicked in yet. And then coming over here on this side is the Eaton 5P 1550VA UPS device. It has six outlets on the back, it's true sine wave, and it has a network card option too, which is really nice, but we'll have some other options here in a second. This UPS, like most of them, provides enterprise class battery backup and pure sine wave output for servers, switches, data storage, and other critical networking equipment. Bottom line, it keeps your devices running while the power is out. But this device provides 20% more wattage compared to traditional UPS system. It has a graphical LCD that we'll explore to give me information at a glance. And it also supports an optional gigabit network card for full remote control, which is pretty awesome. So this UPS is perfect for servers, VoIP devices, PoE switches, networking device, or really anything you can plug into it. Another cool feature that this UPS has is that with those six outlets, there's two groups of three. So if you have some devices that need battery backup but aren't critical to your network running, you could plug those into one group, the non-critical group, and then if it needs more battery power or it's running on battery power for a prolonged period of time, it can shut those down and then only power the critical devices to extend the runtime. And there are other optional devices you can buy to plug into this to monitor things in your environment like temperature or humidity, which is great for a remote site. And all of this comes in a one new package that can be mounted in your server rack. So let's check it out. So this is the back of the 5P1550. You can see it has two groups of outlets and this is what I was talking about. So we have group one and group two. And these groups are so that you can assign these to critical devices and non-critical devices. So in the event of a power failure, if it's running on battery long enough, you can choose to shut down your non-critical devices and power your critical devices a little bit longer. And you can see there's a USB port, another communications port, and then actually a network port right here too for communication. And this port is for configuration and remote administration. So I haven't figured out where on the rack I'm gonna place this one yet. I'm thinking about putting it towards the top and I'm thinking about dedicating this one to all of my network equipment while dedicating the other to my servers. And here's the panel for the 5P1550. Now it says load not powered because I don't have anything plugged into it or I'm not pulling a load right now. And you can see right here that group one is off and group two is off. And those are those two groups I was talking about. One group for your critical devices and one group for your non-critical devices. And you can see I have 90% power left and 268 minutes of runtime. Now it doesn't really look too interesting now because I don't have anything plugged in nor have I been using it. But if I were, you could see the load you could see the input and output. You could see the battery usage and how much is left and the efficiency, average power usage, the overall power usage, and additional information. So this is really cool that it tracks this within the LCD panel, giving you a quick way to look. But they also have software as well. As you saw, I have a network card in this device. And there are many different configuration options within this UPS, but I'm gonna keep all of them at the factory default. I think the defaults that it's shipped with are probably best. So let's also mount this power supply. So in order to rack mount these, I had to attach ears to both devices. Once I got the ears attached to both, then I can install the server rails. So the server rails were pretty easy to install. They're pretty typical server rails, but I did notice that the server rails weren't full depth. So they have a little lip on them and it only goes about three quarters of the way back. So I'm not sure if I can mount these the way I want to. So these rails are mounted now so I can put my UPSs in, but my original plan of putting these back to back isn't going to work. I was hoping to only use 2U of rack space instead of 4U and place these back to back. But as you can see, these shelves aren't long enough. So I think I might temporarily mount them on here and then later on get full shelves so I can mount them back to back. That is if they're not too long, but we'll find out here in a second. Okay, as you can see, these both fit in here and they both fit in here fine. And I did a little bit of measuring and I can actually put these back to back if I get different server rails. So I actually need to get a mounting kit 
that has rails all the way back. But I think I have an extra pair on my other server when I take out my disc shelf. So I might swap those out and then repurpose these for something else. So then I'll be able to only consume a total of 2U since it'll be on the same 2U in this first 2U of available space. And for mounting the Eaton 5P1550, it's gonna go right here. No, I'm kidding. It's not gonna go right here. It's on a shelf right now only because I'm not entirely sure where this is gonna go. As I mentioned, above here, I'm gonna have my network devices. So I'm gonna have my network cables coming in here, then I'm gonna have a switch, then I'm gonna have my firewall, then I'm gonna have some other things that you'll see here shortly. Uh, but I don't know exactly where it's gonna go. I should have planned out my rack a little bit better and then I would know exactly where this was gonna go. But I also need to see my devices next to each other just to be sure it's gonna work out. This is gonna go here for now, but eventually in a future video, you'll see it racked up here. So I don't know why I'm laying on this table, but I'm going to. <laughs> Anyways, my back is kind of killing me. <laughs> Not really. Well, it kind of hurts. So it probably didn't seem like I did much in this video, but I actually did a ton. It's sped up quite a bit. And I'm super excited about getting all of my devices in my rack powered by both of these UPSs. The UPSs on the bottom, as I mentioned, are gonna be connected to my servers. And then the UPS on the top, the 5P1550, is gonna be connected to my network devices. And that one having the network interface to be able to toggle devices on and off is going to be great for my network devices because I have something else that's coming that's going to be able to power and toggle on and off all of my server devices. And another interesting and awesome thing I'm gonna be doing with these UPSs is monitoring them with NUT. And NUT servers and easy way to monitor your UPSs and then take actions based on the state of your UPS. But I have a video that explains all of that. And when I say all of that, I mean all of that. It's really long. But recently, David from Triplight created an open source project that automates the entire thing with a Raspberry Pi, which is awesome. Within a minute, you can get Nut Server up and running on a Raspberry Pi and monitoring your UPSs. And I'll leave a link in the description so that you can check it out. And I'll have a short video coming here soon to show it off and how fast and easy and automated it is, because it really is awesome. So huge thanks to David for creating this open source repo and sharing it on GitHub and sharing it with me and automating the Nut installation process, because we know it can be complicated and it can take a long time. So yeah, I'll have a short video on that soon, so be sure to keep an eye out for that one. And a huge thanks to Eaton and Triplight for sending me these UPSs, they're fantastic. I cannot wait to use them in my rack, and I cannot wait for the power to go off. I actually can wait for the power to go off, but if it does, I know that I'll be protected with these two UPSs. And soon we'll get these hooked up to my servers and my network devices, and we'll put them to the test. So more server rack stuff coming soon, so be sure you're subscribed. And remember, if you found anything in this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I, I can't say I'm not guilty of that. I mean, sometimes, um, like I said, sometimes it's easier to test. Uh, and I, I don't mean full-blown test your code for the first time in production. I mean, sometimes, you know, getting your environment to match what is really production is near impossible. So sometimes you do have to do a quick, uh, quick fix or a quick rollout of something in production, test it really quick, and if it doesn't work, Revert, revert, <laughs> which I, I've done. I've done plenty of times, but but that's all based on the fact that you can revert really quick. <laughs> if you can't revert really quick, it's not, it's not so fun uh, testing in production. <laughs>